Hi there. So uh, my name is Spencer Xani. I'm a graduate student at uh, MIT. Um, this video here is just going to go over some uh, details uh, regarding how to build our desktop MUO encounters. Um, I think I'll break this up into four videos. So this first one, I'll just show you basically what the MUO encounters look like. Um, second video, I'll go through how to build from scratch the uh, main printed circuit board. And the third video um, will be the uh, silicon photomultiplier, as well as the SIPM, oh, sorry, the silicon photomultiplier, coupling it to the scintillator, um, and building that PCB as well. Uh, the fourth video, I think what I'll do is I'll probably go over how to troubleshoot these detectors. Uh, since you build these from scratch, you probably you might run into some problems. Uh, maybe I can uh, show you basically how to diagnose what part of the circuit's having the problem. Um, and hopefully throughout this too, I'll do a measurement um, uh, to show you kind of how uh, the, the muon rate changes as a function of how much how much stuff or how much overburden you have above you. Um, so anyways, let's get going. Uh, so here are uh, a couple of the detectors. So on the far left here, so this is the original detector. Uh, we put out a paper in AJP uh, describing how to build this guy. Uh, then soon after that, we put out a smaller version of the detector uh, that was quite a bit easier to build and had some updated electronics. Uh, and that's these blue guys here. Uh, these ones here were actually built by some students here at uh, uh, WePack. Um, and you can see um, that they're kind of they're stacked right now, right? So um, as a muon passes through uh, multiple of these detectors, they'll fire at the same time. So what, what you're seeing here is every time a light flashes, uh, it's uh, the detector is basically triggering on some signal coming in from the silicon photomultiplier. So every once in a while, you have a muon go all the way through all these and trigger all of them at the same time. So maybe we can just watch for one. I, I wasn't really looking. Uh, top three there. It should happen. I bet you. Uh, I bet you we trigger all these detectors uh, once every ten to twenty seconds. Oh, that was pretty good. Anyways, I'll keep going. Uh, I'm sure you'll see one in the next couple seconds. Uh, and then the newest version. This is what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, are these guys here? So these three here. Um, so these have a couple updates over this guy. So uh, if we look at the back here, primarily, um, we can see at the bottom here. This this here is actually a, uh, a micro SD card. Um, so you can actually save data directly to the SD card with this version. Um, there's also, let me just get something to point with. Okay, so um, there's also this over here. This is a 3.5 millimeter audio, millimeter audio jack. Uh, so what you can do here is basically you can take like a male-to-male -male cable like this here, uh, plug it in, and you can connect multiple detectors um, together. Um, and so that's actually what I'm, uh, that's what this guy's doing right here, actually. He's running off of, so he's, they're running off of this little cell phone battery. It's a power bank here, um, and you can see they're at the back here. They're connected uh, through a 3.5 millimeter cable. Um, they're both being powered through this single uh, USB cable, USB to mini. Um, and then if we look on the front, so the reason why we connect multiple detectors together is because it allows you to um, either run them in uh, what's known as coincidence mode. So um, I can run one detector that triggers on everything, and then I could select the other detector to only trigger when the, the other this detector here triggers. So we call the one that's triggering everything the master, and the one that only triggers when it sees the master trigger is called the slave. And the way that we set this up is, if we look at the back here, uh, there's these reset buttons uh, right there. If I, res if I reset the top, then the bottom, it'll set the bottom one into slave mode. And you can see the light uh, lights up, indicating that it's in slave mode. You can also see if you look at the screen, well, we'll wait for one trigger to come in. Uh, this guy will trigger probably once every five to 10 seconds. Um, let's let him keep going. There was one. Okay. So let's see if we can see the screen through the, my camera here on my computer. So on the screens here, what you can see, if we look at the slave here, uh, the top is indi an indication of how many counts it's seen. The next line is how long it's been running. The next line is uh, the amplitude of the previous uh, pulse. So each one of these dashes here uh, indicates a SIPM uh, voltage of about 20 millivolts. So this, this one here looks like it might have been that one there is on the order of 100 millivolts, uh, and the S indicates that's in slave. You can see up here on the master, there's an M. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and then the bottom row is just the uh, the count rate, which takes into account the detector dead time. Um, okay, so if you were to open one of these up, uh, let me just I'll open this guy. So you basically just have to pop off these back four screws. Okay. 
and it just slides out of the case like that. It, it's just resting on these rails in the case here, uh, the PCB is anyway. Uh, this is what the detector actually looks like. You can see there's the bottom of the board, um, here's the front, the side. No. Um, this top piece here is a uh, plastic scintillator, uh, and there's a silicon photomultiplier attached to the bottom. Uh, and uh, when basically the silicon photomultiplier sees a signal, um, it sends the signal into this, this bottom board, and this bottom board does this, uh, this data acquisition and, and uh, reads out the data through either uh, the USB port at the back here or to the SD card. You have to upload different code to run each one of these. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's operating off of an Arduino Nano, so I don't know if you can, it's kind of dark here, but this, this board here is just, I've, I've just inserted an Arduino Nano into the board, and that's actually what performs the... Uh, uh, the readout, as well as it controls like this LED that flashes and the OLED screen. Um, if we were to unwrap this guy, this no, the scintillator, you'd see something that looks like this. So this over here. Okay. So this is my plastic scintillator. Um, you can see the sipum. There's a couple to it. I don't know if you can see, but there's some optical gel that's coupling the two. Uh, on the bottom, there's a uh, another printed circuit board, and this guy just plugs directly into the main PCB. Uh, and then there's these uh, aluminum standoffs, and those just uh, secure it basically to the main PCB. Uh, so normally what I would do is I'd wrap this up in uh, aluminum foil, then tape it up and, and it would be uh, good to go. Um, I can show you what this actually looks like too, this is kind of neat. Uh, if we illuminate the scintillator with some ultraviolet light, what it does is basically it's uh, absorbing the UV light and re-emitting at somewhere around uh, 420, 400 sort of nanometer. Uh, wavelength. Um, you know, you don't have to illuminate this with light, right? Like this, this is triggering on uh, charged particles that basically pass through the scintillator. Uh, so, you know, rather than that, we could uh, um, uh, use some sort of radioactive source. So here I have a uh, cobalt 60 source. It's relatively old, I think, 2015. Yeah, so like three, kind of three half-lives in, but it's still relatively active. Um, and these detectors are sensitive to gammas. Um, and so I can illustrate this, I'll show you, um, I don't know, uh, I'll just put it near the new detector. You can see it just starts lighting up like crazy. Yeah. Okay, and I'm bringing it to these guys here. Okay. Um, so part of the signal that you do see is actually comes from gamma radiation. So, you know, uranium uh, that you'll find basically in just about any sort of... Uh, concrete or something like that will actually emit uh, gamma radiation, which will also trigger these detectors. Um, however, to get a pure like muon sample, the way that you do that is you run it in, a, in some sort of coincidence mode like this. Um, okay, so what I think I'm gonna do uh, is, uh, I kinda like to make a measurement during this whole thing. So what I'll, uh, what I'll do is, I'll take this setup here and I'll go put it by the window. I'm kind of in the middle of the building right now. Uh, and I'll just make a, a rate measurement, uh, a muon rate measurement, indicated by the slave down here. Um, and, uh, and I'll leave it there for about an hour while I build the main PCB. Then I'll put it down in the basement, which is about five floors below us. And you should see a rate decrease of maybe 20 to 40%, uh, depending on how much overburden we have here in the, the, the floor that I'm on. Um, but it would be kind of cool to actually give a measurement while I'm actually building this thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... I'm legitimately just going to take this and go put it by the window just behind me um, and let it sit there for about an hour while we build the main PCB. So the next video will basically go through um, step by step. So here's the PCB. We'll go step by step how to build uh, this guy and the SD card PCB. Uh, the third video will go through how to build the uh, SIPM PCB and uh, machine the scintillator. Um, I'm not actually going to machine the scintillator, but I'll show you some tricks. Uh, and then the third video will plug it in, test it, and I'll show you what the actual measurements, um, I'll show you what this measurement is uh, during the third video, and then the fourth video will actually go and look at the basement. Okay, uh, see you in the next video.